What's up, sons? It's Blind Dragon with Seven Attack once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at the hash rates for the latest Intel i9 11900K. But before we get into it, here's a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button down below and you will be able to access our privately hosted Rocket Chat. Selecting the 199 option will get you access and after that you just need to head on over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks and find the section for connecting on social media. In that section there will be a secret registration URL for Rocket Chat where you can sign up and enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without scammers, spammers, or bots. Welcome back. So thanks for the 100k subs. YouTube promptly removed about 1200 subs due to their little quarterly cleanup thing they do every year. So we're back down to 98,000 subs. But if you guys want to go ahead and show support for the channel, hitting that subscribe button would be greatly appreciated. And we are working on plans for what we are going to do at 100k. That aside, we also need to mention I didn't get B-roll for this processor because I was just super busy swapping motherboards in and out, testing the 5950X, testing the 11900K. It slipped my mind, so apologies there. The motherboard that we went with was the Gigabyte Aorus Pro AX. The reasoning for picking this motherboard in particular is because it is the cheapest board with the 90 amp Dr. Moss. And that is basically important for power delivery, so on, overclocking, that sort of thing. It is still just a 12 plus one power phase, so nothing crazy there. And let's talk about the specifications for the 11900K. The 11900K is an eight core, 16 thread CPU, losing two cores and four threads over the previous gen flagship from Intel, which is the 10900K. And that's been a point of contention as far as this CPU goes, and rightfully so, because losing cores seems a little bit ridiculous, especially when we're talking about the price point still being around $600. The base frequency is 3.5 gigahertz with a max turbo frequency of 5.3 gigahertz. That's on a single core. We'll We'll talk about that here in just a second. It has 16 megabytes of Intel smart cache and it is a 125 watt TDP. However, it will consume a lot more, especially depending on which motherboard you get and what overclock BIOS settings that you currently have enabled. It does support DDR4 up to 3200 megahertz officially. I've had no issues running 3600 megahertz CAS latency 16 on this particular CPU with this motherboard. So there is that. It's still on 14 nanometer architecture. So it's behind AMD quite a bit as far as that goes, as well as behind AMD on, of course, core count. But we are winning here with the core clock. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the test bench. The test bench is running an EK Velocity water block connected to a D5 pump with a 240 millimeter by 60 millimeter radiator. This kept us nice and cool at 70 degrees Celsius with advanced mode. So let's talk about that. Basically in the BIOS four gigabyte, you're gonna have three modes. You'll have your normal mode, a gaming mode, and an advanced mode. The normal mode is gonna do like an all core boost clock of up to about 4.7 to 4.8 gigahertz. The gaming mode right out of the box will overclock it to about 4.9 gigahertz on all cores and then advanced mode will take you all the way up to 5.1 gigahertz on all cores without you having to do anything but change it to advanced mode. The manual overclocking will function quite well. However, we were still getting better results just running advanced mode in Cinebench. So that's what we decided to stick with for the test today. So the stock score on Cinebench for the 11900K was 15,490. In advanced mode, we were looking at 16,187. I was able to actually get that up closer to 17,000 just with advanced mode, depending on, of course, like updating certain portions of the BIOS, etc. It's not a bad processor. It is faster than the 5800X if you have the power and the cooling to handle that. And that was at about 230 watts running in Cinebench. So then we moved on to testing Monero. Now, as you guys might be aware, Intel is not great at Monero, primarily because it can't use all the threads. It only utilizes the physical cores 
And whenever you go ahead and try to activate all of the threads, which we did do on a live stream, if you guys want to watch live streams of me testing, twitch.tv slash blind run, I do it over there sometimes as well play as well as play some video games. I'll leave a link down in the description. So that knocked the per core hash rate down into the 200s if we tried to activate all 16 threads. However, it's not terrible if you go ahead and just have the eight cores because it will hash per core between 800 and 900 hash a second, which is pretty respectable. Our single thread out of the box about 812 hash a second. Nets the total hash rate to about 6503. And yes, if you're looking at mining Monero, you can already tell that you should be going for a cheaper Ryzen CPU. Probably the eight core 16 thread, even an older generation is going to way outperform the Intel. Now for random X, if we take a look at the profitability, QRL will barely be profitable at 10 cents after power per day, and Monero is a penny after power per day on this particular CPU. So this isn't something you wanna be purchasing for random X, and so obviously put it aside. Now we did test Varus coin, and with Varus coin we had uh, an issue with the 5000 series that we're gonna go back and test, the 5950X. Thanks for letting me know, guys. We have figured out SBR miner. We'll probably be doing a how-to on SBR miner so that everybody can basically be on the same page as I was incorrect in using, I believe I was using NHQ miner. Either way, we did use the proper one for the 11900K, so I'm pretty sure this is accurate. We're at 26 mega hash a second at 212 watts. That will be profitable on the 11900K with a daily profit of 57 cents after power. So not terrible, you can mine Varus coin. Obviously Varus coin does appear to be the CPU mining coin that everybody should be using right now. So we definitely need to do a how-to on it, right? That's pretty much where I'm at as far as that goes. That pretty much wraps up all the hash rates for the Intel i9-11900K. My thoughts on that are basically, if you are looking at CPU mining at all or wanting to throw a CPU in like your Ethereum mining rig to go ahead and mine some Varus coin and while you are mining Ethereum, you're gonna wanna stick with AMD. We are working on some thoughts and mining rig builds surrounding that idea for you guys that will be here on this channel. We're starting today, moving the 5950X to my production rig. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then of course we have the 11900K on the gaming rig. There is a reason for that. We'll talk about it in a later video. If that interests you, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.